What's up people and welcome to Banished. Let's start very quickly by starting to learn the game and do the tutorial. And welcome to Banished. In this game you control a group of exiled travelers who decide to restart their lives in a new land. You'll have to help them survive. At any time during this tutorial you can access the options menu by pressing the door button or escape. From the options menu you can save and load your progress, change settings, or exit the game. Uh, first get familiar with moving around to write WASD. You can move the camera around by pressing WASD. You can also move the mouse to the edges of the screen to move the camera. Try it now. Works like a charm. You can rotate the view by pressing Q and E. You can also rate, rotate the view by holding the middle mouse button and dragging the button. Um, whoa. Uh, yeah, right, zooming in and out pretty much. Uh, you can zoom the camera in and out by pressing in. Oh, wait, I did something wrong. Never mind, but yeah, zooming in and out is pretty much using the scroll wheel or insert or delete, but obviously the mouse wheel is a lot easier. You can change the pitch of the camera by pressing page up and page down. All the keyboard. Oh, poor people. All the keyboard keys are configurable, can be modified. Yep. Now that you're familiar with the movement controls, it's time to start playing. The people you control need shelter to keep the, need three things to survive: shelter, food, and a way to keep warm in the winter. You might notice that some people have this icon floating above their heads. It's a house. This means that the town folk don't have a place to live. You can provide the town folk with places to live by building homes for them. First, select the housing menu or F3. I'm old-fashioned, so I'm gonna uh, do some clicking. Right, uh, placing a building will leave a footprint where it will be built. To get the town folk to start construction, you have to collect wood for the structure and stone for the foundation. You can cut down trees and remove rocks from the landscape by using destruction tools. Next, make this. Use the mouse click in one corner of the, of the highlighted area and then drag the mouse to the other corner. Oh cool! Town folk will head to that area and start removing rocks and trees. While they are busy, you can place a stockpile where the citizen will store logs, stone, iron, and firewood. Stockpile. Use the mouse to click in one corner of the highlighted area, then drag to the other corner. So this will be our stockpile. The town folk will move the harvested rocks and trees to the stockpile. Once there are materials in the stockpile, the people will move logs and stone to the construction locations. Okay, so they, they gather the stuff, bring it to the, the stockpile, and then they will start building. While well, any townsperson can cut down a tree or move materials from one place to another, some jobs require specialized workers. In this case, of con in the case of construction, you'll need to assign builders. Uh, try to assign two builders by pressing the up arrow next to the profession. Oh, so this is the amount of people, kind of laborers. So you can kind of. Oh, that's pretty neat actually. You can change between what um, what you kind of want the people to do. So if you want like someone to hunt, you just press hunter up a couple of times, and people will start hunt hunting. And press it down again to zero if you think they hunted enough. The builders can now begin construction on the house. Just one house is enough. You need three more houses to give other families a place to live. Once again, click on the housing tool, put another house. Using the house, uh, using the mouse, move the house to the highlight area and press the left mouse button. You may need to rotate the house to get them into place. This can be done by pressing T or R. Go. Another one. Perfect. Sometimes it takes a while for people to do all the jobs that you have assigned. If you're in a hurry, you can speed this game. Uh, you can change the speed the game runs at. Press fast forward twice to increase the game to five times speed. Try getting used to modifying the game speed. You can slow down, pause, resume, and speed up the simulation once all the houses are built. Tutorial will continue. 
10 times speed is apparently the fastest they can go. When one house is built, this is... Look at all the rocks. It's so nicely... I gotta say, they work pretty hard. Second house is, house is currently being built. What's the snow thingy? Great! You've built houses for all the town folk. That may seem like you ha- uh, That may have seemed like a lot of work for a few houses, but now you know how to build anything. To build any structure, place a building footprint. The citizens will clear the area and then collect enough resources to build the structure. As long as there are citizens assigned as builders, they'll take care of the rest. The people are going to need food, otherwise they'll starve. They can acquire food in a variety of ways. They can hunt, gather and fish, plant crops, grow orchard, orchards, or raise livestock. If the people are close to starving to death, the icon, the hunger icon will appear above their heads. Wait, one was. Oh my god. Since the town is near a river, the easiest way to quickly generate food was probably fishing. Ooh, this is going to be a dock. Most buildings that produce food or other resources require workers. You can assign fishermen. Um, Alright. How many fishermen? Let's do two fishermen. Assign four fishermen. Okay. Four fishermen. There we go. You may notice this icon above some of the citizens' head. This means that the workers you've just assigned don't have a place to work. As soon as the fishing dock is complete, they'll start working there and the icon will disappear. Uh, wait for the fishing dock is built, right, just speed it up a little bit, 10 times speed, build that dock. <laughs> oh my god. If you build roads, people will move slightly faster as they move from place to place. Place roads by first selecting roads and bridges on the toolbar by pressing the wheel and select dirt road. Right, the same builders that construct buildings will prepare the road for use. After they perform construction, the town folk will move faster when traveling on the roads. As the town grows and workers produce food and other resources from many locations, it's useful to see an overview of what the town has available. This information can be found using the overview tool. It can be found in the tools menu. Uh, right, it's this one. What, what's that? In the overview, you can see the amount of stored construction materials, food, firewood, clothing, and tools. You can also see current population, average health, hearts, and happiness stars, as well as the current weather. Well, I'm pretty sure we can <laughs> figure that out ourselves. Current weather, rainy, and temperature. All right. Number of adults slash students slash children. Ten adults, zero. Students, six children. It's early summer. Okay. 32 wood, 26 stone. This is iron. This is tools. When food and other consumable goods are produced, they need to be stored somewhere. Until now, the people have been placing everything in the cart that they arrive with. You can place a storage barn that can hold more. Start by selecting storage. Uh, storage. There we go. If you look at the overview tool, you can see that there aren't enough logs left to build the storage barn. You have to cut down more trees for construction to continue. Let's cut down this big... Holy... That's one huge <laughs> area. The people may also need to stay warm in the winter. The easiest way to do that is to cut lo logs into firewood. To do this, you need a place for a wood cutter to work. Uh, wood cutter, right? Let's build him over there. If the town folk are in danger of freezing to death, this icon will appear above their heads. Wait, didn't we have ten 
Zero sick. Oh, of course there aren't any students because we don't have a school probably. If they are overly cold, the people will return to burn home, return home, or go to the closest warm building they can find. Freezing icon. This icon will appear over homes that don't have any firewood available for heating. Oh, so these two did, but these two houses don't. Now wait until the storage barn and what woodcutters are built. Let's heat it up again. And look at our fabulous people cutting down all of those trees at immaculate speed. There we go. So one child already... What? One child? Oh my god, who, who the hell made a baby? Who are the happy parents? I want to congratulate them. Another baby! Oh my god! Oh my god, see even the, all the deers are coming here like, congratulations! It's like baby Jesus was born, you know? But we got two of them. I keep getting confused. Are these rain? They're not reindeers, are they? Are they mooses? It's like a bigger. It's more thicker. I'm pretty. Maybe that is a reindeer. I don't know. Or maybe they're called differently. I always get those those animals with antlers. I'm pretty sure there's a, there are a couple of them. I always get those confused. But yeah, that's beside the point. You can always assign workers by using the profession tools. Professions tool. You can also change the number of workers when examining the structure of a detail. Uh, details of a structure. Click on the woodcutter building to. Um, right. Okay. So click on it for the details. Assign one woodcutter by pressing the up button. This does the same thing as changing the number of workers using the profession tool. So the profession is kind of an overview of everything. Whereas if you click, obviously that's fa faster than clicking a building one by one. But Seeing as there's only one building at the moment, it's probably better to just do it this way. A worker will now start producing firewood. He or she will move logs, oh, it'd be poor if it's a girl or a woman, move logs from stockpiles to the building and cut them into firewood. The rest of the town folk will use the firewood to heat their homes. Now that the storage barn is built, the cart that the people arrive with is no longer needed. You can remove it and anything else you build using the destruction tools. Wahahaha. <laughs> Get out of here. What? Oh, there we go. The workers will remove the cart and then move it into the storage barn. You can also use the time to change the game speed. Yep, speed it up again. Oops. The reserve of tools is low. I don't know what that means. There we go. They probably put it into the bar now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. With some maintenance and a little luck, a small small town like this will survive for many years. The children will grow up, become workers and have children on their own. New houses can be built and the town can continue to expand. If at any point you need help with something in-game or a description of how a building or tools work, you can refer to the in-game help by pressing this and a question mark. Help me. Help me, oh my god, so much. <laughs> Help me, please. Right, quit. No, what? I didn't mean to quit. <laughs> Fuck. Wait, I can just load this, right? I didn't save. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I guess that's the end of that tutorial, so it doesn't really matter, but... I wanted to see like what, what happens, you know? Oh well. I guess that's the first tutorial. We're gonna do all of them. Survival. Is this my town? Oh my god. As a town grows, additional specialized buildings can make survival easier. In this tutorial, you build a work, uh, work areas for blacksmiths, tailors, herbalists, herbal essence, 
and foresters. First place a blacksmith. A blacksmith is used to make tools for citizens to work with. Blacksmith. Voila. While waiting for structures to be constructed, yep. Speed it up. Next place a tailor. I didn't read what I should probably read it a bit more. Now place an herbalist. The herbalist gathers herbs and provides health benefits to citizens. Oh, why is it all the way over here? Wait, this is our town. But like the herbalist is all the way over there. What's this? Alright, finally a forest is lodged. Forest is lodged is used to plant new saplings and cut down mature trees. Now that the buildings are placed, you can assign workers for each building. Uh, one blacksmith, one tailor, we need a herbalist, and a forester. Alright. Three foresters, oh god. Since the blacksmith isn't complete yet, we're gonna speed things up. Uh, all the workers need tools to efficiently do their jobs. If a citizen doesn't have a tool, the following icon will appear above their head that they need a certain tool. Tools eventually wear out and need to be replaced. Max blacksmith can make new tools. Click on the blacksmith to view its details. The blacksmith will use logs and iron to make new tools. Here you can see the inventory of what the blacksmith has in storage. For making new tools. If you run out of materials, the blacksmith won't work. We have nothing. You can also control how many tools to make and put in storage by setting a limit. If the building isn't producing goods because the limit has been hit, the limit icon will appear above the head. But it what okay. You can aim oh you can enable and disable work at a location by toggling on and off. But it didn't say it did had any inventory, anything in inventory. Yet it was, I don't know, I don't know. Not gonna question it. It's a tutorial. It knows more than I do, way more. You can also change the product that the blacksmith makes. Using logs, iron, and coal, the blacksmith can produce steel tools that last longer than iron tools. Click on the tailor. During the winter months, town folk stay warm by occasionally returning to their heated homes. With a tailor, you can help ward off the cold and stay home outside. Uh, stay outside longer by crafting better clothing. I uh, tailor can use leather or wool to make clothes, or a combination of both to make the best clothing. Obviously, we're the best of the best, only for my people. If you run out of the mater needed materials. The tailor won't be able to work. When this occurs, the following icon will appear above the building. Uh, right, herbalist. An herbalist will collect herbs from the surrounding forest and will help the town folk stay healthy. The yellow circle on the ground around this building shows the area of the herbalist will search for herbs. Citizens need a variety of foods to stay healthy, such as meat, vegetables, fruits, and grains. If the town folk aren't healthy they are not they are more prone to diseases okay herbs collected by the herbalist can be used to help keep the town folk healthy if their diet is poor it's like a dietist or something uh, herbs usually only grow near old trees this is something to keep in mind when you place when you place an herbalist building okay this is the forester's lodge rather than constantly clearing areas of trees to produce firewood Workers at the Forester's Lodge will manage the forest for you. Workers will plant new trees and cut down old trees in an area around the building. The yellow circle on the ground around the Forester Lodge shows the area that the foresters will work in. Uh, you can enable and disable the cutting of trees. When cutting is disabled, no trees will be cut down. You can also enable and disable the planting of trees. When planting is disabled, no new saplings will be planted around the building. Foresters will also remove rock and ore that is in their work area to make room for more trees to be planted. By using these buildings, you can make sure the citizens have tools, warm clothes for the winter, good health, and replenishable forests. 
press uh, press play to play the next tutorial. It focuses on food production. Okay. Oh, so that's what we did next time. Instead of quit, we we did or we quit it next time, but we should have done next, which is this. All right, bigger tutorial. Uh, there are many ways to produce foods for citizens of your town. Hunting, fishing, and gathering can be used to harvest food from the environment. Or you can clear the land and plant orchards, grow crops, and raise livestock. Before food can be produced, you'll need to construct buildings and create areas for food production. Press on the apple, uh, pasture of livestock. Uh, the, the, the pig thingy. Use the mouse, click in one corner, and drag all over it. A pasture. Uh, while a pasture is being built, you can build other buildings. A hunting cabin can be used to designate an area where hunters should search for wild game. Hunters need either open fields or forest nearby to hunt effectively. Oh my god, that's pretty far away. Hunter cabin. Well, this is an excellent area actually. <laughs> Similar to hunters, gatherers search for and collect food that is growing in the forest. Select gatherers hut right in front of it. Okay, they can be like neighbors. Farmers can work in the field and grow crops. Uh, to place crop fields, just do this. Voila. Farmers can also work in an orchard that produces fruits and nuts. This will be our fruit and nut field. This crop is currently disabled, as indicated by the stop sign or whatever. Select the crop by clicking on it. What? To enable growth of crops, first you'll have to select a type of sand seed to plant. You can acquire more seeds by uh, types by trading with merchants and the trading post. Select one of the crop types using the seed button and then select the seed. Oh my god, potato? I like potato. Um, you need to assign farmers to work. Increase the number of workers to three. There we go. In the spring, workers will plant seeds in the forest and in the autumn they will harvest the crops. You can direct them to harvest early by selecting harvest. After planting, the yield meter will show how mature the growing plants are and can be used as a god, god, gouge, gouge, I believe. A gauge, I don't know. To the, I, I, I knew how to pronounce this word before, I forgot. Gauge, gouge, to determine how food will be produced or how much. You can disable or enable work at the crop. Yep. Right, to get works to plant trees in the orchard, we need to pick apple. I love apples. Uh, three. We need to the total farmers to six. All oh, right, three on this one, three on that one. The farmers will plant trees and they will grow over time. It may take several years for the trees, uh, for the trees to produce fruit. Normally, farmers will harvest fruit in the autumn, but you can direct them to harvest the fruit early by pressing the harvest button. You can cut down all the trees in the orchard for wood, or when you want to produce a different type of fruit. You can disable work. Yeah, okay. Not gonna do that. Pretty much the same after planting. The yield meter will show, and the gauge, the gouge, the bush. Uh, remember that the trees need several years of growth before the um, before they produce fruit. All right. Select the pasture by clicking on it. Uh, obviously, sheep. I love sheep. You need to assign. Hertzman, how many? Two. If you want to move all the animals from this pasture into another pasture, you can press the empty button. To do this, you'll have to create. You'll have to to create another pasture that can hold all the animals. Uh, if you want to split the herd in order to increase the number of animals, you can press the the split button. To do this, you'll have have to have space in another pasture that can hold the animals. You can disable or enable work at the pasture by toggling the work button. If the pasture isn't being worked, the animals will continue to grow but they won't reproduce as quickly. Uh, if there are too many animals in the pasture, the herdsman will slaughter them for meat. You can control how many animals are kept in the pasture by changing the value with this slider. This allows you to quickly gain food 
Meat for food if the supply runs low. 15 of what? Okay. Uh, hunting cabin. Hunters will search the area around the cabin, hunting cabin, in search for wild game. In addition to providing meat, hunting deer can provide leather, which can be used by tailors to make clothes. See, it all it all comes together. You can disable or enable work. Yeah, it's pretty much like the other one. At any food producing location, you can control the maximum amount of food to produce. Once the amount of food in the storage reaches the limits, the workers will cease working. Click on the gatherer's hut. Uh, the gatherers will search the area around the building in search of food that grows in the forest. As long as there is forest nearby, gatherers can be a good choice as the first type of food production to use in a town as it provides a variety of foods quickly. Okay, gotta remember that. Uh, click on the fishing hut. Uh, each building that produces good tracks produces goods tracks how many resources are produced each year current season oh my god we got three logs the, the current season displays how many resources have been produced so far during the current year it's early summer the previous season displays how many resources were produced by the previous se season for comparison as the population grows, you'll need to expand food production to keep the citizens from starving. Producing a variety of food types will help keep the citizens happy and healthy, happy and healthy, happy and healthy. Press the next, alright, we'll finish the next one as well, might as well. I mean, then we'll pretty much know everything, right? And then we can start playing and fail right from the get-go, because that's what I'm good at. The trading post can be used to acquire new crop seeds, fruit, seeds, livestock, food, and many other items. Once a trading post has been built, different types of merchants will periodically arrive with goods to sell. A trading post has already already been built for you. Why, thank you. Click on the trading post. It's probably this one. The trading post needs to be built on a river or on a lake that connects to the large river running through the town. If it isn't, merchants won't be able to get, to, uh, get their boats to the trading post. Before you can make a trade with a merchant, you need to stock the trading post with the goods you wish to sell. Any resource that has been produced by the town can be traded. Since the town has more tools than, and coats than it currently needs, you can stock the trading post with these. Uh, set the desired number uh, by using okay, 100. I'm definitely gonna type that, I'm not gonna press up or down. And the iron tools by 120. I'm not gonna do like. Uh, oh, oh. I thought it only increases it by one, so I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna, gonna press it 120 times. You're crazy. The trading post needs workers that will move inventory from storage barns and stockpiles into the trading post. Assign four workers as traders. While the workers uh, speed it up. Speed it up. Look at my beautiful town which I actually haven't built at all. Now that you have some inventory to trade, click on the trade tab to interact with the merchant. Well hello merchant. This particular merchant is selling chicken. Oh my god I love you dude. Once you buy livestock you can wait, live chickens? Oh, well, that's we can make chicken food out of it, so that's good. Once you buy livestock, you can move it into the pasture where the animals will reproduce and provide the town with food. Increase the number of chickens to buy to six, but he has oh, it costs four hundred. Hmm. Oh, this is the value. Okay, six. That's two thousand four hundred. Increase the number of iron. And high coats to trade until the total matches. Oh my god. Wait, that's pretty much everything. Pretty much. Okay. So many six wait, how many chickens did we buy? I forgot. 
6. You can now see the chickens you've bought in a fenced area attached to the trading post. If you have a pasture set up for chickens, they'll move into it. Since you've made a trade, the workers will start refilling the trading post inventory. If you always want to buy a certain item from a merchant without interacting with the trading post, you can set up an automatic purchase. Never. <laughs> The purchase mode determines if and when the traders will make a trade with you. Never. You can set the maximum number of items to purchase in several categories. The traders will buy items up to this amount as long as the trading po post has enough inventory to cover the cost. Um, if you set more than one item to be automatically purchased, you can change the priority of which item to buy first by moving the categories up or down. Uh, normally when a merchant comes to trade, they'll have a random assortment, uh, random assortment of goods. Rather than relying on chance to acquire the items you want, you can place custom orders with merchants. Oh my god. The order mode determines if an order is being placed or if it is a recurring order. The available items a merchant can bring will be displayed. Chickens, cattle, sheep. Merchants have limited space in their boats, so if you order too many items at once, they may not bring them all. Items bought, brought from a custom order will cost more than normal. Trade can be a great way to acquire items that the town is lacking or can't get produced. This concludes the trade tutorial. Press exit, uh, quit to exit to the main menu. Oh my god. <sighs> Ooh. Ooh. Breathe. Okay, well that's the tutorial. Um, this game seems rather, I I guess, with the further you get into the game, the more I don't want to say difficult, but I guess complicated it gets. Obviously, we've been through the tutorial now. I still don't feel properly educated or ready for battle. I don't know how you want to call it, but um, ready for the banishment, ready for the 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 build up i don't know what i'm saying but what i'm saying is next video i'm going to try and start from the beginning and do things my way from showing off everything that i've learned from the tutorial probably i've forgotten 90% of it already but yeah this has been the tutorial um perhaps not that interesting but it was mostly for myself i guess but i want to thank you all for watching please like and subscribe for the next video peace